Some things I just want to preface this video with are one, I'm really sorry for the random orange light, it's my curtain, I can open it otherwise audio will get worse. And talking about that audio, the second thing I want to preface this video with is that I'm really sorry if the audio sounds dreadful, I've tried so hard to make it better by like covering my PC a little bit, making it upstairs, like making everyone quiet in the house, but where I live is really loud and so even with the house being completely quiet, the outside will still kind of trickle audio in, so I'm sorry about that. But today I'm going to be talking about why your phone slows down. So, you know, with PCs they tend to slow down, what do you do? You swap out the hard drive, put an SSD in, you basically made a computer that's 10 years old feel like it's 5 years old or 2 years old or even brand new. But you can't quite do the same with phones, can you? Because they use flash storage or at least similarly flash storage that you use in SSDs. So even if you could upgrade it, you almost that you couldn't anyway because it's just flash already. So why do phones slow down over time? Number one, Android isn't really optimized out of the box, is it? When you compare it to something like Apple and iOS on iPhones, where it's specifically optimized for that phone or at least a handful of different phones, it tends to work better out of the box automatically apart from a few exceptions like the Google Pixel, which again is kind of similarly made for a specific phone. And the problem with this is it's already not the best, it's not got the best head start in the race. So your phone might feel really fresh and really good, but after maybe six months even you might get some slowdown and that's not a lot. We're talking longer term when it comes to slowdown, but if it's already slowing down after six months, you're not doing pretty well, are you? Next is the availability of operating systems. And the problem is, is stock Android is made for the Pixel and the Nexi or Nexuses, whichever you wanna say for the plural. And it's literally, as it's made, it's being released to those phones. So as soon as it's released, in general, it's already released to the Nexus. So they're almost the first phones to get that operating system, if that makes sense. And the phones like the, the Samsung that I'm reading the notes off of, or HTC, or LG, these companies like to take the Android experience that is, you know, stock Android, and then apply their changes to it. So it might be extra software, a software skin usually, uh, adding some bloatware with some, you know, they, they actually make deals with companies so that they get paid to put their app on that skin, if that makes sense. So companies like this are, that are getting bloat, essentially, what your bloat is, is their kind of profit, if that makes sense. So these companies will take time to almost build a separate skin on top of it, and then that will take a few months to kind of make and almost develop and make sure it's fine, which it usually isn't. And then when it's released, it's usually a stagnant release. So certain markets or certain devices, because the S7 Edge has like two different devices or three different devices. So you've got a case of each one of those as well. And it takes a long time, usually maybe even six months to a year after the initial release of the operating system for that skin to come out. So when Nougat came out, I actually used a mobile developer preview on the Nexus 6, which was over a year ago. And I only got the Nougat update maybe three or four months ago on my S7 Edge, even though it's a newer phone. So you see what I mean when it comes to the development. And you might think, well, that's silly. How? Are they, why are they doing this? Because surely it takes more time to, to develop for another phone that they really don't need to because obviously they've got the brand new phones coming out. So it's already one step behind. Why would they develop it? And of course, you do get those deals with those companies like Microsoft and, and like Norton and, and things like this, where they'll actually get paid to put the app in the skin and then release the skin. And if you've got plenty of devices, this can actually mean a little bit of profit, well, quite a lot of profit, enough to make sense to actually make a ROM for a phone that you're not actually selling anymore because you're still reeking the benefits, the reaping the benefits of that phone, even though you're not selling that phone anymore. And it's a, it's a way for businesses to make profit out of older phones and almost like getting a little bit of extra revenue, which they can use to pay for like marketing, R&D, paying their employees, stuff like this, that they really don't need to take out of the other other areas of their company. They can just take it all from this kind of area. And of course, if it's taking time to get these new operating systems and stuff, obviously your phone's gonna slow down because newer apps are optimized for newer operating systems and there are bug fixes and plenty of other reasons why you'd need a new operating system, or at least want one. And so because you haven't got that for so long, you know, you've got to wait, or at least sometimes you don't even see it at all, then you're not going to get those bug fixes and the bugs are going to come in and you're, there are going to be problems that haven't been checked out or they have been checked out, but you wouldn't know about it because you're on the old setup. And this is something that does make a lot of sense and it's not down to the phones themselves. This is actually down to the hardware that's inside the phones. So when it comes to making applications 
Of course, you've got the new operating systems, which is like the first tier. You've got the phones that the operating systems are going on, and then you've actually got the applications that are running on these operating systems. So you've got phone, operating system, application. So that's kind of running on each other. And the problem is, is that new apps actually are optimized to run on those new operating systems and to run on that new hardware. So if this is, hopefully this is a good an analogy for you. When new hardware is released, the average for kind of the performance specification is raised usually because newer phones and newer hardware have like better performance and all these kinds of things. And so the average is slightly raised and sometimes it can go up quite a lot and sometimes it can go up a little bit. And that means that phone companies will usually change the way that they, they make their apps to kind of fit that average so that the average phone can run an app smoothly, if that makes sense. So it doesn't require the top tier, but lower end phones probably won't be able to run it very well. And so the average kind of goes up. And of course, when you uh, apply this kind of system, it means that older phones have to work harder every time there's a release or every time there's a new release of phone. And so the problem is that you have, and that this is kind of an analogy I thought of in the shower earlier, is that you have someone like Ronnie Coleman, which is a bodybuilder, and you have someone like Beetlejuice, right, which is a comedian, but he's not, you know, he's short, he's not very strong and stuff like that. And so this is the old chip and this is the new chip. And for the same weight, uh, let's call it a 45 pound plate for those of you in America. It's gonna, Beetlejuice is gonna have to work a lot harder than Ronnie Coleman is to actually lift that weight. And so even though it's the same weight for each phone or for each person in this analogy, it's actually gonna be harder for the, the lower end chip or the older chip or Beetlejuice to lift than it is Ronnie Coleman. So when it comes to these things, it's it does factor into battery life as well. So I'll make a separate video actually on why battery life degrades over time. But essentially, newer chips aren't only more powerful, they're more efficient as well, which means they usually don't have to work as hard, which which is mainly factored into the power. But then also they, they're actually more efficient, so they use less power in terms of battery life to achieve the same thing or to work on the same task. And so this can factor into a bunch of different things on why phones slow down and the battery life and why phones kind of get worse over time. And actually sometimes the application makers or, or the, the system makers will actually deliberately make these apps harder to run so that on newer devices, it's fine, doesn't really matter if it's harder to run because these things are new anyway. They've got like four gigs of RAM, six gigs of RAM, eight gigs of RAM, and they've got these quad core, eight core chips that are running at two to three gigahertz, um, which is fine because it's not gonna affect these new phones, but it will affect the old ones and it's gonna make them want to upgrade to the new phone. So it's gonna be the same for everyone. Everyone's gonna get the same application that does the same things, uses the same power, but it's gonna be harder for the older hardware to run and it's not necessarily gonna be difficult for the new hardware to run because these things are like ridiculous computers in your pocket nowadays. And sometimes, and this is my final, my, my final little thing, is that it's, conceptual and it's actually psychological that we think that these phones are slowing down. Obviously they're not and there are those things that I've mentioned, but even if those things didn't exist, we might think that back in the day the Galaxy S2 was the quickest phone out there, it was amazing, it was competing with the iPhone, the Galaxy S3 came out, wow 720p screen, who has a 720p screen in a phone? We've hardly got those in our TVs, let alone in a phone. And you know, it's really, really good and it's the top edge and, and everyone is trying to battle to be this standard. And uh, it, it's just, you know, in newspapers and in blogs and articles that this is the fastest phone. In, re in reality, it wasn't really that quick because now of course we've got the Pixel, we've got the iPhone 7, we've got the Galaxy S8, you know, the OnePlus 5 and all these. And they're running really, really quick. And of course, maybe in five years time, that won't be very quick. In five years time, it might be the press an app instantly loads, no loading screens whatsoever. And again, it kind of is time sensitive. So back in the day, we thought the S3 was the fastest phone ever. When of course it's not because now, you know, the OnePlus 5 or, or the Google Pixel is the fastest ever. And then, you know, in a few years time, it's gonna be something else. And so these are the reasons at why phones tend to slow down over time. Some of them are conceptual, but most of it is just standard that apps are being updated. And there's a big tinfoil hat thing that of course, like some people think that these, uh, these apps are going to deliberately ruin older phones. And to some degree, they're probably right, but Really, it's because of new chips and optimization for newer chips, meaning the older chips are less optimized and they're, they're working too hard, which can affect obviously battery life, but mostly performance. And it means that you get those loading screens and those stutters and those, those laggy features. And actually one thing I'm gonna add really quickly, it doesn't really add too much to it in terms of the performance, but 
older phones use uh, lower end screens and their lower resolution which kind of make the actual application appear to be worse because obviously text elements are a bit bigger everything's a little bit bigger a little bit more jammed in there it doesn't really look like it's optimized or like it's laid out well because some things can actually because of such low resolutions can overlap and have issues and that's nothing to do with the performance but obviously it implies that the performance is worse because it's not very well optimized and it doesn't look very good and so it makes us think oh actually this isn't performing very well when really it's just an aesthetic thing where of course it's not just about aesthetics is it we know that there are a lot of loading screens on older apps and sometimes you're sat there for hours just waiting for a web page to load on a Galaxy S2 which back in the day you thought was the bee's knees alright guys so that's the end of the video hopefully you've enjoyed this video I have worked pretty hard on actually planning it and trying to make it as good as possible considering I'm just sat in front of the camera and these videos don't tend to be too structured but hopefully I've structured this pretty well added some good b-roll and some other clips in there and yeah hopefully this has all kind of taught you something and uh, that was the aim of the video anyway and please do like if you liked it dislike if you disliked it please comment uh, your thoughts and talk to the community that we've got going on hopefully that they can answer your questions and even add more information that I haven't included in the video maybe because I'm just too lazy or because I genuinely don't know I'm not the smartest kid in the world come on and please do subscribe if you're new around here because it really does help me out to see those numbers grow to make myself a little bit more you know enticed to make even more videos of course I don't just do it for the numbers but it is really nice to see it gives me a sense of achievement it really does help in my day-to-day -day life actually sounds really sad but that's basically how it is so yeah please do like the video dislike the video comment on the video subscribe if you're new around here you don't have to do any of those things don't feel like you need to but if you could that would really support me anyway thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one peace